Brothers and sisters, we're going to eat it exactly five minutes. If you have any questions for Professor Buzzer, please come back and ask him now. And then we're going to break the eat in five minutes, inshallah. Any more questions for the Professor? No, you're welcome. It's over and over. Shema Israel, Adonai, Elohim, Adonai, Echad, so some thing that happens. Where, brother, where, where, can you give Brother Ahmed a few exact examples of where God is referred to as Echad in the Bible? I said you go to the Ten Commandments, Deuteronomy, and something. Where God is referred to as Echad? Yes. We're right in, in the Shema, which is Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 and 5. Listen, Israel. Shema, Israel. Deuteronomy, that's the fifth book. You go from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Six, sixth chapter, verse five. The Lord our God is Echad. He is Yahweh Echad, Adonai Echad, which is your Arabic Echad. 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 Is it D in the end? Yes. It's actually the difference here is usually uh, the in Jew, like Hebrew, the end sound. Yeah. You see, sound. Oh, you my name is Ahmed. Ahmed. You know? yeah, yeah. So Ahad, Allahu Allah, Ahad. So the Hebrew is more guttural than the yes. Arabic? We have some. As well, but we not have, in that word. Not this one. Yeah. It's like when Jewish people will, will say assalamu alaikum, Jewish people say yeah. shalom alaikum. Okay, yeah. Other questions for Professor? Yeah. Uh, we're hoping just to hear more actually from the literature. <laughs> yeah. You know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes was not enough. Really. Yeah, so we're going to do this again. We do. We'll do it again, God, God willing. No, no, no. The, I mean, the main points I think that we want to get at is that the thing that Christian biblical Unitarians and Muslims have in common is the belief that God is one. There's only one God and God is one. It's the God of Abraham. It's the God of right. our fathers. What we, what we, I think, illuminated briefly is that our differences are that Unitarian biblical Christians still believe that Jesus, may peace be upon him, died to atone for the sins of mankind, whereas Muslims do not believe that anyone has or could die for our sins. The other, it's major, those are the major two differences. There's some other differences, but those are the major ones. Other question? Yes. So why can't we continue it and eat later on? Oh, we, we could. Well, we're hungry, you know? No one's hungry? Yeah. Sure. You're not hungry, but I feel like... <laughs> Other questions? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day we eat. Uh, no, no, no. Question is, uh, <laughs> you can yeah. eat and look at it. Right. My question, question is, is sorry. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. the Day of Judgment, yeah. um, as we believe as Muslims, we're all going to stand before yes. God. Yes. Yes. And then we will be judged for what we did, for our yes. sins and our good deeds. And then we're going to end up either or either in heaven or in hell. Paradise, paradise, paradise. 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 Well, you do. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, you will be with me in that future paradise. Okay. The paradise. So, you do believe in paradise Absolutely. and in hell as a yes. hell as a punishment? Paradise as a Absolutely. Hell, though, is not an everlasting thing. Our hell is annihilation. It's called conditional mortality. And we believe, certainly, in the destruction of the wicked, but not an endless torture difference. We think that you'll be exterminated, but not tortured forever, that's a difference. So, in other words, the main difference, I think, is that uh, the Unitarian Christians would believe that an evil person who dies on that would just be destroyed, that they would cease to exist, whereas Muslims obviously believe that Hitler or anyone else who was evil and died on that and was not forgiven by God would be in hellfire being tortured. So, oh, you mean that by destroying us, he would not have it. Like, he would cease to God. cease to exist. He's right. God. So there is no, there is no punishment. There is, well, there is no a, fire. It's a considerable punishment to be denied yes. in immortality. Okay. In paradise, you're getting immortality. To lose out on immortality would be a vast punishment. But this is all Christian belief, or? Uh, no, some Christians, not only this denomination. I, I work for the Atlanta Bible College, which is the denomination that founded that college is called the Church of God, Faith of Abraham. You like that? The Faith of Abraham. It's rooted in the monotheistic faith of Abraham. And what I'm describing is called conditional immortality. That's to say that your immortality is conditioned on the future resurrection. We believe that you have a down payment of immortality through the spirit now, the Ruach now, but you get immortality literally in the future resurrection. You're not immortal now, we can still shoot you, right?
But you gain immortality through resurrection at the second coming of Christ. But the wrongdoers, they will not be resurrected. They will be resurrected to be judged and ex extinguished. Okay. If that is if they are what we call incorrigibly wicked, so can I get on with this one second? Yeah. We believe that there are trillions of human beings who never have heard of Isa. They, they really sure. have not. So God cannot judge them in the same way that he can judge me who have, right? So they would given, be given some sort of probation. With the, so we have three categories. We have the incorrigibly wicked, those who having known fully the truth. They got their message but denied it. That's right. If they go on denying it, then there's little hope or no hope for them. However, there are many people who have not ever really heard. They could only be judged on what they could reasonably know. Okay? That's in John 15, where Jesus said to the Pharisees, our Isa said to the Pharisees, if I had not come and told you, you would not be guilty. In fact, now I've told you, you're guilty. You see that? I think we can all agree on we're not questioning the judgment right. because we believe in, a, in God being a fair judge. Absolutely. So right. he judges as Absolutely. he knows better. But That's exactly you know, right. Absolutely. All the question was like, yes. because we believe in hell fire. Yes. But it's you know, right. Ours is extinction, annihilation, rather than conscious torture. Okay. So the Muslim perspective obviously is different because obviously from our perspective, if you kill six million Jews and you die, you think, from our perspective, that yes. being annihilated, it just seems yes. to exist, might be kind of getting off a bit easy from our perspective. Yes. So that, I see, I see that. Well, for us, hellfire seems like a yeah. reasonable, but that's yeah. just a difference. There may, there may be some differences at, uh, right. uh, so that's another there, but it, it's a minor difference. Judgment, yes. For us, the Messiah is the appointed judge. He's not God. But God has, is using Messiah. That's another difference. That's another difference. Oh. Muslims believe that God yeah. solely controls yeah. Don't judgment and that he will. In fact, there's actually in the Quran a conversation, you'll find this strange, a conversation in the Quran that quotes what God will say to Jesus on the day of judgment, what Jesus will respond to. And basically, God will ask Jesus rhetorically for the benefit of the people watching, yeah. Did you tell the people to take your mother and yourself as gods instead of me? And Jesus responds in front of everyone, uh, Glory be to you, I would say nothing, I'm paraphrasing, I would say nothing that you were not told, have told me to say. And you know anything I said. You know what's in my heart. I do not know what's in your heart. Yes. When I was among them, I told them what you told me to tell them. You were God, worship God, etc. And after I left them, you were the witness over them. If you forgive them, they're your servants. If you punish them, you're the Almighty, you're the wise. I paraphrase that, but that's a conversation yes. with that God will have with Jesus. Not yes. for Jesus' sake, because obviously Jesus knows what he did to do. Yes. But to clear him of the people who worship him and let them hear Jesus say, yes. Hey, I did tell you to worship <laughs> Well, our New Testament doesn't. I mean, if you look at any translation of our Greek scriptures, Jesus never ever said, I am God. That's just, that's, that's for us lunatic, right? If he'd said, I am Yahweh, they would put him in the mental institution and rightly. You can't be the unbegotten God, that's just true. Uh, that's a tragedy. They believe Jesus died for their sake. Yes. Yeah. So, if, you know, after the death, you know, if, if they will get the punishment, it will be very temporary because of the Jesus already made the sacrifice for them, and they will become our, you know, the, the punishment will be very temporary. Would be very much. So, yeah. so yeah, I think you're saying we have to answer this question. So he was saying that some of his Christian friends yeah. believe that because Jesus died for their sins, peace be upon him, they think this that if they're punished in the afterlife, it will be very temporary. But I think most, most, most even Christians who have this belief, who believe that Jesus died for their sins, think that they're not going to be punished at all if they die on that belief, that they'll get there and be okay. So that's actually, I've never heard that before, of Christians who think they'll be punished, but only temporarily. I've never heard that before. But the bottom line is that the professor mentioned that he believes the people who knowingly die doing evil and rejecting the truth, he believes they'll be annihilated. Most of them believe they will face, if God does not forgive them, punishment and health. Other questions? Yes, but... So the question was, why well, do do biblical Christian Unitarians believe that Jesus is the Son of God and, and the best follow-up? 
do you literally believe that? That is, that he is the begotten Son of God, as many Trinitarian Christians exist. Uh, it says, and then his question was, if that is the case, would that not negate the unity of God? That is, God being one and indivisible. It's, it's a great question. These questions are very easily answered. Son of God is physical. God the Son is not. Adam, in our scriptures, is called the Son of God. Adam is. Who calls him the Son of God? These are language things. You know, if I come to the States and I say to you, I'm mad about my flat, you probably think I'm angry about my flat tire, right? I just say that. I'm excited about my partner. I'm mad about my flat. I'm not. There's a, a lot of language confusion that only by sitting down with our dear friend here and you can we sort that out. So our scriptures, and we're as bound to our scriptures as you are to the Quran, right? Our scriptures call Jesus the Son of God, not God the Son. The Son of God is also Adam. So we have the first Adam. Jesus is what Adam should have been. He's the model human being. Adam failed to it, right? So God then had the Son, we think, miraculously begotten. The Bible uses the word beget. I'm sorry, I have to say procreate, if you like. Can we get a little understanding that way? I see, you don't like the word beget. That's fine. The Quran doesn't do it, but the New Testament does. So in the womb of Mary, a miracle, a biological miracle was brought about. That's what we do. We're calling that procreation, we're calling it forgetting, only because our Greek scriptures do, that's all. So the So this is a, a sign I've actually studied this as well, tried to ask in difference. Obviously for Muslims, we would never even metaphorically call anyone the son of God. But in Hebrew that is a common trope to refer to righteous people as the sons of God. In fact, the Old Testament says, as many as are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Another point in the Old Testament, it quotes God as referring to Israel as, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So in Hebrew, this is a common trope. In the New Testament, that exists as well. Jesus is referred to as the Son of God in the New Testament. But interestingly, for some reason, it's capitalized. And I, yeah, and so when it's for a, a, a sign to him, they capitalize it to make it different than the way it was in the Old Testament. Um, so I think this is a, another difference because even if Muslims were to accept the Jewish tendency to call anyone who's righteous the Son of God, then we would say, well, okay, if you're going to do that, and that would mean that applies to Adam, to Moses, to Abraham, he's one of everyone. We would not say that Jesus is in some unique way the Son of God, appropriated, begotten. For us, Jesus was created from nothing, not from God, but from nothing. Just God says be in Jesus is just not that right, right. So it's, gave there's a language difference story, and I think a bit of a bit of a theological difference there. Actually I have a question based on the language actually. Yeah. Because uh, I know for example the Old Testament is written was obviously the original language was Hebrew. Right? Mostly Hebrew, some Arabic. Yeah, Arabic. So my question here is this, like, is, are they using really a literal translation between, for example, Hebrew and whatever language translation? So, in another word, does, there's a word that's used there in Hebrew, and it could be son or something else, and they use the, the word son, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know, I do. No, so I'm is there a different... It would be nice if there was, there isn't. The it's Hebrew not. word for son is ben. So, so it's use the word ben. Absolutely. And by the way, in Arabic too also, right? Ben, Ibn. So it's clear. It's, 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 there's no, there's it's no problem there. All yeah. we're finding out is there's a different yeah. language approach. Just take the word worship. Today, if you say you worship someone, you probably mean God. Yeah. In the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament, you can worship people who are not God. This is a language trick. There's a lady called Abigail in 1 Samuel 25. She meets David, the king, and she falls on her face in front of him, worships him, not worship him, in, in, him as God, you see that? So this is a different language, isn't it? If we could just sort that out, I think we'd understand each other better. And in fact, in the New Testament, a few different times, even the parts that you would acknowledge, and you acknowledge the whole of the New Testament, there are multiple parts where people, it says people worship Jesus, and they use the bottom. But even you would not think that means worship, worship as in God. So that is another common a language. language thing. People, and I think for our Trinitarian Christian friends, they take all of that very literally. So they'll say, well, it says that if she worship Jesus, that means he's God. And it says Son of God capitalized. So that means the Son of God and somehow God as well at the same time, which I could never make it's sense of. You know. it's just well, it's this, that is the same language difference until today yeah. in the Middle East and in the, in the yeah. Arab countries. Yeah. 
when they want to refer to the someone, let's say to the father of the house, you know, like the father and the wife, they call him Rabbul Usra, which if you translate it, it's the God of the house. But no one means he is the God of the of house. Course, it's that's just, exactly right. It's like a metaphor that's meaning cool. something. So the problem comes yeah. if someone would come to translate it literally wow. without interpreting it. Yeah. Because when you when you translate something, yeah. you know if you can translate a poet or anything, you right. cannot just give it a literal translation yeah. because you're gonna lose the meaning. Because you can. it means something else in a different language or a different culture. So you have to interpret it to understand. It's so not that the sun, the God of the house, well. is different right. than the Son of God. It's very, it's very straightforward. We have so many scholars working at this. As you know, they're not, they're not all idiots. They're rather good in language, you know. So, for example, the, the Catholic Bible, the Roman Catholic Bible, in Psalm 45, there's a reference to the Messiah as God there. They put a little G, right? Yes. The same Hebrew word, Elohim. But it is correctly translated with a little G. So they're recognizing and obvious. So I, I, it's a great point, but it's not difficult. I like what your, your Middle Eastern point is. That's right. The father of the family is so to speak, the God of the family. Right. So when Jesus worships by people in the New Testament, He's not being worshipped as God. He's being worshipped as the Messiah. That's different. That, cl that clears up a lot of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, I think maybe the next time we do this, inshallah, we get maybe an Orthodox Jewish scholar coming. Because really, I think often Jewish people are laughing at all of us saying, you know, how are you sitting here interpreting our book for us? We understand Hebrew, and they'll you know, tell us this is what this means. And so another problem, I think, is people coming to the Old Testament and using or really treating like a Rorschach test so we all read onto it what we want to read onto it as it happens a lot of we think that you know what we understand of it is true that God is one and they would agree with that as well as Jews do uh, but I, I think we should go ahead and break in and go ahead and eat at this point Professor Bros would eat with us so maybe we can all sit together and ask him some more questions there sisters if you want to eat first and then we'll come over with this up first yeah so the professor and his wife and Carlos and our guests go ahead and eat first and then uh, the rest of the sisters and then the very thank you thank you professor and there's pizza for the kids and me.